Chapter 23, verses 1 through 7. The title coming out of the scripture is, Why is David given so many final words? Why is David given so many final words? I'm looking for 2 Samuel. Excuse me. 2 Samuel chapter 23 verses 1 through 7. New King James Version of our Holy Bible. Now, these are the last words of David. Thus saith David, the son of Jesse. Thus says the man raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet Psalms of Israel. The spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his words was on my tongue. The God of Israel said, he Rock of A Israel spoke to me. He who rules over man must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be like the light of the morning. When the sun rise, a morning without clouds. Like the tender grass sprinkling out of the earth springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain although my house is not as with God yet he has made with me an everlasting covenant ordered in all things and secure for this is all my salvation and all my desire will he not make it increase but the sons of rebellion shall all be as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hands but the man who touched them must be armed with iron and the shaft of a spear and they shall be utterly burned with fire in their place I have read 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 1 through 7. Let us pray. I have seen what they do, but I will heal them anyway. I will lead them. I will comfort those who mourn, beginning words of praise to their lips. May they have abundant peace, both near and far, says the Lord, who heals them. For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declared the Lord. O Heavenly Father, all we ask on this day is for you to keep watch over all the flock both here and far away. For only you can protect your people. We ask this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Again, the title of this message, Why is David Given So Many Final Words? 
it is that this passage is the first of many last words of David. In the Old Testament, ten, ten times David has last words. For David, the second and third of which came can be found in 1 Kings. 1 Kings 2, chapter 2, verses 2 through 4 and 5 through 9, the last words of David. And the fourth through the ninth in 1 Chronicles. Chapter 22, verses 7 through 16, verses 17 through 19. In chapter 28, verses 2 through 10, 20 through 21. Boy, David has a lot of last words. Also in Chronicles chapter 29, verses 1 through 5, 10 through 19. And finally, chapter 23, verse 27. Even more intriguing is the fact that David is unique in this regard. There are no recorded last words of any of David's royal successors, any of David's royal successors, with 10 different last words of David. We also realize that there is more going on than simple confessions as to what the last words actually were. As biblical generations passed and Israel's power as a nation waxed and worn, David came to be viewed as Israel's greatest king. Unsurpassed, in the eyes of both God and humans. He was the shining memory of Israel's past, as well as the vision of what Israel's future could be. His many last words attest to his biography, attempts to keep his, his greatness alive in the presence and projected into the future. So, what do the last words in 2 Samuel tell us about King David? They point to his elevated state status as one who was set on high, or whom God raised up. The Dead Stroll, the Dead Sea Strolls point to uh, this understanding. They describe David as God's anointed and even as God's favorite. David goes on to claim in this poem that he is the one through whom God spoke, <clears throat> who ruled justly like the sun on a morning without clouds, and whose own house, family, had been similar red, re, Righteous before God. Mm. So what are we to make of these words in 2 Samuel 23? Let me see. 
David is presented by the author as a poet, prophet, since he used the term oracle. Numerous of times, twice in the first verse. These words is regularly employed by prophet authors in the Hebrew Bible when they claim to be uttering the precise words of God. The opening line may be translated an oracle of David, Jesse's son, an oracle of the highly exalted warrior, anointed of the God of Jacob. Favored by the strong one of Israel, we can go on and on talking about David's accomplishments as king over Israel. But now, these be the last words of David. Various opinions are entertained as the precise meaning of these statements, which is obvious, proceeded from the compiled and collected of the sacred canon. Some think that as there is no division for chapters in the Hebrew scripture, this introduction was intended to show that what follows is not part of the king's portal composition. David didn't do this. While still others consider it the last of his utterance as an inspired writer, raised up on high for an obstacle family and condition to the throne. Earlier in 1 Samuel, the covenant made with David is that if his descendants, if his offspring kept God's commandments and precepts, that David's family would rule Israel forever. But the anointed of the God of Jacob choosing to be king by the special appointment of that God to whom by virtue of an ancient covenant the people are Israel's own all that particular dynasty and distinguished privileges. They had been given all because of a covenant made with God. They had nothing to worry about as long as they followed God's commandments and God's precepts. No strain, but we know that in David's lineage, in all of the families of David, there was 
some feedback. There was some not following the rules. There was some doing of sin. But the Spirit of the Lord spoke, spoken by me. Nothing can more clearly show that all that is excellent in spirit, beautiful in language, or grand in prophetic imag imagination, imagery, excuse me, which the Psalms of David contain, were on, not in his superiority in nature, talent, or acquired knowledge, but to the suggestion and dictation of God's spirit. Wow. We say, as long as they was able to show that they believed, trusted, and was led by the Spirit of God that the covenant would continue. Now let's go back. Let's talk about the rock of Israel. This metaphor, which is commonly applied by the sacred writings to the Almighty, the rock of Israel, was very expressive to the minds of the Hebrew people. Their natural fortress in which they sought security in war were built on high and accessible rock. In other words, David and the covenant with God, he could probably lose no battle. He probably lost no battle because of God's spirit. Speak to me. Either preceptively given the following counsel respecting the character of an upright ruler in Israel or prophetically concerning David and his royal dynasty and guess who the great messiah of whom many think this is a prophecy rendering the words he that ruleth there shall be a ruler over man there shall be a ruler over man. Man will have someone to rule over them. Who is this? The ruler over man, Christ Jesus. Although David's house had not flourished in any uninterpreted course of worldly prosperity and greatness according to his hope. Although greatness, crimes, and calamity had disclouded his family's history. Some of the most promising branches of the royal tree had been cut down in his lifetime, and many of his successors should suffer in like manner 
for their personal sins. Although many reversed and revelators, oh, revelation, may overtake his race and his kingdom, yet it was to him a subject of highest joy and thankfulness that God's will involubly mention his covenant with his family. Again, there you go again. The covenant with his family until the advent of his greatest son, the Messiah, who was the special object of his desire and the author of his salvation. We understand that to mean that Jesus was the ultimate desire of God through David's lineage. Let those who have long experience of God's goodness and the pleasantness of holy wisdom, when they come to finish their course, bear their testimony to the truth of the promise. The truth of the promise. To us, what is that truth? that the kingdom may continue forever according to his promise. God's promise to David. Christ's promise to us that as long as we trust and believe in him, we will see the kingdom Trust, faith, commitment, the grace of God. Maybe those last words of David are a reminder of our longing. A longing that connects us to the anquivities of a world that we know can be better than it is. A longing, a longing to be with God, a longing to get to the kingdom, a kingdom that is here. You just have to believe and trust. that Christ Jesus is on the way back. He will return. He says, the way that you see me leave is the way I will return. He says, I go to prepare a place and I will come back to receive you. Mm. Mm -hmm. What a choice of words. But I ask that you check out all of David's last words in First King and in the Chronicles. For those of you who understand and is willing to give your life to Christ, to Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, King of kings, Lord of lords. The doors of the Crucible Ecumenical Church is open. Will you come? Will you come and be part of 
the Almighty. The one who died that we may live in eternity with him. <laughs>